Shalom Chabrim, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. RT is reporting here about uh, President uh, Putin here in his comments here uh, based on the fact of a continuing growing threat on the Russia on Russia's border in the Baltic regions there. The buildup of some 300,000 uh, NATO troops that are happening there. So Putin commented on this. I want to go right into that with a couple of other stories we'd like to share with you. He says, our goal is to effectively, effectively neutralize any military threats to Russia's security, including those of the NATO strategic anti-ballistic missile defense system, he's referring to NATO, the prompt global strike concept and in information warfare. Um, uh, today, leading world powers are currently using the most advanced scientific military equipment, is what he's talking about, knowledge and technology for weapons development. Um, and I might mention here, when he mentions right there about the uh, the the weapon development, Russia is working on what they call much or, or has a much bigger nuclear weapon. Uh, now we're not talking about the Satan II, but now they have one called the Demon uh, that's supposed to make the Satan II that could take out a country the size of France look like a baby uh, nuclear weapon. Anyway, it says Russia, just like those countries, is conducting similar research. Letting you get a little tip off as we create advanced weapon systems. Okay, he says we strictly follow the international obligations that Russia has taken upon itself. He goes on to say here, but some other nations, as we know, cancel previous agreements. And he's speaking directly about the United States, their missile agreements, as was with the case with the anti ballistic missile system. This is, of course, done to try and gain the upper hand. We will continue to do everything necessary to preserve the strategic balance of power. Uh, we consider any attempt to alter or disrupt this balance to be ex extremely dangerous. And it is extremely dangerous. Let's not forget, as he says, that what, you know, what formed this was in the early 40s and 50s. They helped the world to avoid large-scale conflict. And that's exactly right, what he says there. It did help to avoid conflict, but it is majorly growing again. And Cold War is not even a good word. But, you know, let me just show some, share something with you here, a good news as well. You know, as I've stated before, there, I, I have issues, not so much I don't think with Donald Trump as, as much as I do those that are gathered around Donald Trump, uh, such as Kenneth Copeland, that may be leading him in a direction that he may not even be aware of himself. Uh, I notice again Donald Trump has recently spoken about how that he has, uh, or made a speech there, he's really going after those that, that hate Catholics. Well, you know, I, I don't have a problem with that really because I don't hate Catholics at all, but I do hate a system. I can't stand a system that, that is out there to bring us under a one world global system. That I am against. All right, I'm not for that at all. I'm not for a new world order. In fact, I had some intel information that come from a journalist friend of mine there that shared with me because I wanted to know specifics about Vladimir Putin and different members inside of Russia there. And it was shared with me privately that People such as Maria Zakharova, for one, is totally against New World Order. You, you have no idea how much that blessed my heart to hear that. Also, Russia's foreign minister, completely against the New World Order. So that kind of gives me a little bit of hope that maybe Putin as well. He stated in his own words that he's against the New World Order, but I've been a little bit, uh, I'm a little optimistic now. But I've been a little concerned because of Henry Kissinger. I'm only hoping that he's only playing Kissinger to find out more about what's going on. But otherwise, we are definitely headed in a New World Order direction. Somewhere along the line, though, this whole system's going to get derailed. God's going to do something to derail this system, and really it's going to backfire in their face. All right, so anyway, but here's a good news, though, about Donald Trump that I really appreciate from Sputnik here. It says, U.S., China, Russia may hold talks on reconstructing U.S. massive debt under Trump. Can you imagine that? Now, and according to the article right here, Russia and China and other emerging market uh, economies have intensified the sale of holdings and U.S. government bonds. Russia financial experts suggest that if the sell-off continues and President-elect Trump moves forward on his spending promises... Washington, Beijing, and Moscow may end up holding talks with creditors on restructuring the U.S. debt. 
This would actually keep the United States from going into a total economic collapse. Do you realize? I mean, that's one benefit of Donald Trump running for president. In fact, our guests that we're going to be having on tomorrow, I don't know if we'll be able to air tomorrow. We may end up having to air Sunday once we get through doing the editing there, but we have a special guest tomorrow. I don't even want to give away who it is yet. They had some very, very interesting things to share with us today uh, about Donald Trump and, and this election, how things are going, and it, it'll be a blessing. I, I know you'll, you'll, you'll really appreciate this. So we can't wait to bring these guests on tomorrow, have an interview with them tomorrow. Uh, again, I'll kind of keep it a secret as to who they are. Uh, anyway, going on with TASS here, Russian Defense Ministry says Aleppo bombing's blunder will leave stain on Kirby's bio. Um, Anybody knows about John Kirby here in his daily press briefing here the other day, which, by the way, thanks to many of you that I asked you to go there, uh, express your thoughts as well. Take a look at it and express your thoughts. This is where uh, he really comes up against Gayen, RT's reporter there. It's right around the 24-minute uh, the mark, in case you want to go there as well. Again, I'll leave it in the, in the comments below. Thus far, I've been the only one that, have, that was bold enough to put the comment on uh, the State Department's YouTube channel. I put on there, it is a shame that Gayen was treated the way she was. She is a journalist and deserves respect as such. Regardless of what the State Department may think, RT is a reputable news agency. I find more bias in U.S. media than I do in Russia today. I realize U.S. and Russian news both carry independent agendas to some degree, which is true. You know, I mean, every, let me tell you something. U.S. media, Russian media, Israeli media, all media has <clears throat> a bit of bias to some degree. You cannot help it. It's hard to try to avoid it as a journalist. You try to be non-biased. And I try that as well, even when it comes to Israel. I've exposed many things on our own people because, you know, judgment begins at home, guys. You know, we have to clean up our own house first. So, yes. So I, I went on to say there, uh, Mr. Kirby may be stressed by the questions posed at times, but I have watched for some time and clearly see the bias against gay and RT's reporter. And that's true. He has lashed out at this poor girl many times. I applaud Matt. Matt's the guy you see in the front a lot of times on the left-hand side of your screen there. He stood up for her and reminded Mr. Kirby we have a new president, or excuse me, I said on there, I wanted to remind Kirby that we do have a new president-elect. Uh, and he's trying to reestablish the ties with Russia. But at this moment here, John Kirby, he was clearly trying to attack Russia, but using Gayen as his uh, target to attack. Uh, it's just very disturbing here. So Tass brought some of this out. I've seen other articles in RT. RT made some major headlines with this on their news agency, standing up for Gayen as well. And not only uh, did RT do it, but even Maria Zakharova, uh, Russia's uh, 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 spokesman for, for uh, foreign affairs, she stood up as well uh, for uh, Russia's reporter Gayen. So it's really nice to see so many people come out. And not only that, I was very happy to see too, 92 thumbs down for this. So to me, that is support for this young woman as a reporter as well. She does deserve the right. She's very gutsy. She is back in there again today, only this time she, she's even more bold and brash. She says, can I ask a question or as, being that I am with RT, do I not get a question asked? So <laughs> she's kind of rubbing it back in uh, Kirby's face there, you know, and, and you know, I, I do realize John Kirby, no doubt, is under a lot of stress with all the questions, but it still is no excuse for the way she was treated, none at all. Uh, anyway, something else I wanted to share with you. There, this, what I'm going to kind of speak to you here at the last part of our broadcast, I don't know what to think about these things. I'm, I'm just being honest with you, but I'm going to lay it out there because it's weird. All right? It's just really weird. I know there's a lot of people that believe in aliens. There's people that believe in the, the, the planet Nibiru coming. I do believe, and I, I believe that there is a planet called Nibiru. I do believe that that planet is something that is coming mainly because of the uh, Chilean uh, astronomer 
that did his research about it that came out when he was like around 90 something years old. They did a documentary, they show it. The man is a, was extremely brilliant scientist and he revealed about this planet. He speaks about its elliptical orbit, etc. He calls it a comet planet. Uh, and so I, I believe there's some truth to the planet actually coming. And, and before I really get into this, let me just say another reason why I'm kind of looking at this. Those of you that remember, uh, and this is not on that particular uh, article here, but Vatican holds conference on extraterr extraterrestrial life, uh, something back from December of 2015. We know the Pope of Rome, Time Magazine, covered it in an article that the Pope of Rome said that he would baptize aliens. Now, this is supposed to be a prominent world figure, world religious figure. You know, even if we don't agree with, with, the, with the Catholic Church's doctrine, uh, he's still a world political figure and religious figure. So for, for him to just come out and say, uh, I think Time Magazine said he would be willing to baptize Martians and other articles they said they caught aliens. Uh, they, they developed the Lucifer Telescope, which is a pretty demonic way to call it. Uh, there's all kinds of things out there. And then if you take into consideration that the book of Enoch, which is part of the Ethiopian gospel, uh, it, was, it, it was part of the Qumran scrolls, so it is a legitimate biblical book that speaks about the Anunnaki, these, uh, as some people would call them, fallen angels, which are de demonic beings, spirits, whatever you want to call them, there's something out there. Let me put it that way. There's something out there. And of course, there's a lot of people that believe that they're actually here on this earth. Now, I reached out to Brother Gary Lowry today. And Brother Gary may have already responded to me. I don't know. Brother Gary Lowry, those of you that want to check out his channel, just look up his name on YouTube there. He's a very good friend. I've known Gary for many years. And he's told me about experiences that he has had. And one of the things that he told me that I thought was interesting was he spoke about actually being taken captive by aliens. And I know some people might think that's far-fetched. And, you know, I'm, I'll, I will listen to someone's story. I, I don't say that I agree or disagree. I'll listen, though. But one thing that struck me was he said that they kept trying to tell him that they, are a br that they were brothers to us and that they were sorry for what they had done. That kind of made me think of Pope Francis talking about, oh, he would baptize aliens, you know, and stuff like that. Okay, so I'm not here to take one side or the other. I'm just simply saying I wanted to share something with you because it seemed rather odd to me. Now, this here says, Russia orders Obama, tell the world about aliens or we will. All right? A stunning Ministry of Foreign Affairs, MFA, report on Prime Minister Medvedev's agenda at the World Economic Forum. WEF this week states that Russia will warn President Obama that the time has come for the world to know the truth about aliens and if the United States won't participate in the announcement, the Kremlin will do so on its own. Now I'm going to show you. You can I'll have this, I'll have these links inside of our news. You can go and read this for yourself, the article. I'm going to play something for you. This is a clip right here of a journalist interviewing Medvedev. Now, Western media, because he's going to mention Men in Black documentary, and they say, well, he was talking about the Men in Black movie, and this was all just a joke. And they're taking that because the reporter is laughing. I think she's laughing because she doesn't believe it's true. He's not laughing at all. And Yana said right here, a little earlier this afternoon, I, I told her, I said, look, this is what the subtitles are saying. I need you just to sit down and look at this and see what this man is saying. And Yana said the subtitles are accurate. He says what he says in this. He's not referring to some Men in Black movie that we have in America. There is, a, there, and I'll show you in just a moment, there is a Men in Black documentary that was done in Russia that speaks about alien beings. Now, watch what he says, though. I will read to you the subtitles as we go. It says, the report is provided by the special service which handles the control of the aliens in our country. Wait a minute. He says, reporter, the reporter asks, Mr. Uh, Prime Minister, you know everything. Aliens visited Earth? She asked him. Now, let me clear out the advertising. He says, I tell you first and the last time, 
together with a nuclear suitcase presented uh, President Bring folder, top secret. It is entirely devoted to the strangers who visited our planet. You notice, she, I don't know how well you guys can see this, and let me get this as big as I can for you guys. She's like, I guess she finds it humorous. So she does, you know, like sitting here laughing uh, about what he's saying. All right? All right, I got to make it smaller because you can't see the... Uh, I can't see the text of this. I apologize. Let me. All right, here we go. All right. So let's continue on. Says I tell you the first and last time, together with a nuclear suitcase, President Bring folder top secret, and it's entirely devoted to the strangers who visit our planet. All right, I already read that to you. Now see, she's laughing the entire time, thinking it's funny. The report is provided by the special service which handles the control of aliens in our country. After the management term, two folders and a nuclear small suitcase are transferred to the new president, he says. And, and I'm telling you, this guy's not, he's not cracking a smile. It's not funny to him what he's saying. He says, you can receive more detailed information having watched the Chronicle documentary film of the same name, Men in Black. The reporter says, oh you, how many? She's talking about how many aliens are here, is what she's asking. Now, he says in conclusion here, and again, she's laughing about it, but he's not broke a smile yet about this at all. It's not a joke to him. How many of them among us? I can tell you, I, I can't tell you because the panic will begin. And she just thinks it's funny. Okay? To her, it was just hysterical. Now, he refers to this video here called Men in Black. It is a documentary. Uh, it does have it does have the subtitles in the documentary here uh, of what they're saying in there. Now the thing is, is it starts off by a very odd story in the beginning about a little boy that had some very unusual gifts there, uh, but then uh, it goes into the different things about UFOs that they've had inside of Russia. So you get, you get this documentary here about the men in black. And as I said, it'll go on. I, I actually watched it. The thing I don't like, though, is that there's sometimes that they're not giving you the subtitles of what they're completely saying. You really want to know. So, you know, with Jana, I can sit down and she's able to translate and tell me what the rest of it means. I know some of you guys will be frustrated, probably like me as well. But what really gets me, though, is that Medvedev is talking about this, that you know, they're, they're doing this article that's saying that he's going to tell Obama either come clean with it or else. Now, we know that Hillary Clinton had made the comment during her campaign that, you know, if she got elected, she would tell you about the aliens. Well, the, 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 in, in, in the documentary of Men in Black, by the way, that, that the Russians have actually done here, they state in this documentary that not even presidents of the United States know and presidents of most countries have no idea about these alien entities. Okay, that's all I can tell you. And I wouldn't be bringing it up if I don't know that the Book of Enoch actually speaks about these things. And of course, we're looking at a huge major deception that will be coming on this earth. That's what concerns me right there. A major deception is coming on the earth. All right, so this is what's got me bothered as well. So is there some possibility of truth to it? I don't know. I know there's other, there's other reports going on right now. I've seen several of them on, on I've seen them on YouTube. I've seen it on uh, Before It's News. They, they were saying that when John Kerry went down to uh, the Antarctica, I know some people were saying he went there in order to be able to see Nibiru, that it can be seen from there. I've seen those type statements, and maybe this is very true. I believe there's a good possibility that that's so. All right, but 
in, in, in several articles that I've seen online, and you can just Google it and see for yourself, they are stating that Kerry, when he went to Antarctica, that he went to meet with the guardians, as they call them, or the watchers. Now, that's what, that's what is called inside of uh, the Book of Enoch. They're spoken about, about the watchers. These are, and these are just demonic spirits. And they're claiming that there is a group there in Antarctica and that Kerry went down trying to get reversed Donald Trump becoming president so that they could keep bringing in Hillary Clinton instead. Now, that may sound... I, I'm not even going to go into that because I don't know what to think of that. I, I really don't. But they say that when he left, they, they told him to leave and for him not to come back again. And of course, there's claims on the internet that this is why there was a major earthquake. You know, John Kerry gets back. He stays there in New Zealand. Uh, uh, and when he stays there that very night, the very place he stays at is a 7.8 earthquake. Them sending their warning to him. All right. Now, let me just say this here. As, as outlandish as all this sounds, and maybe it is outlandish. Maybe it's just a bunch of hogwash. I'm not, I'm not saying yay, yay or nay. I'll tell you one thing, though. I do believe there's a major deception coming. And when you've got the Pope of Rome talking about baptizing aliens and you've got so many government officials now finally coming to a place where they're going to say that there is some truth behind this, something is up. Something is majorly up. And maybe it has to do with CERN. Maybe it has to do with bringing uh, some kind of demonic beings from another dimension. I don't, I don't know necessarily the answer to all this, but I am going to tell you one thing. I think people need to be on guard. They had this thing over in Israel not long ago, like a cloud that circled. that was over near uh, what they call Mocha, uh, the soccer field area there, and it was trumpet sounding and stuff. I believe that this is a, is a deceptive things that are happening and I think that people need to be on guard because that's just what Satan said he would do. He said he wanted to be like God, said he would sit in the temple of God and worship as if he were God. And you know what? Let me tell you something. I've always said, I have always believed that the Antichrist spirit has moved through the Vatican through every pontiff there has ever been. It's just been one after another after another. But wouldn't it be something that the fallen angels themselves if they are able to take a, a form of once again, as they did all these years ago, wouldn't it be something else if they don't try somehow or another to fake the coming of Christ? I wouldn't put it past them. It'll be a major deception. And could you imagine how many people would fall for that? Isn't it kind of odd that all these different uh, religious leaders around America and different places like Kenneth Copeland and and uh, Rick Warren and people like this here who are leading the people back to the Mother Church, Mother Rome and stuff. What are they all coming together for in the first place? Is it to worship some demon or something? Is, are there really alien beings or something down at the Antarctica? Was it really that John Kerry went there? Did they really warn him? You know? You know, I'll let you guys think about that one there. I'm going to stick with the news the way I normally do things. But, you know, I just felt like that maybe I should share some of these things with you because I don't know what to think about it, but I do know one thing. I know that greater is he that lives in me than that devil that lives in this world. And that's another one to think about as well because it does say, I think that's the way the scripture stated, is greater is he that is in you than he that's in the world. If that be the case, then Satan is actually living, in, living among us somewhere in this world. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Real quick, I'm going to share with you as we close here about a five-minute clip of a very special message that I've, that I've just loaded tonight on Danoon Institute. I hope it's a blessing for you. Would not be recognized. Their eyes would be heavy. Their ears would be deafened. Remember so many times Yeshua says, He that hath ears to hear, let him hear what the what Spirit saith. What the Shekinah glory that was inside of his body, hear what he has to say. That's those that had ears to hear. Okay, but see, not everybody had ears to hear. Now, most of my Jewish... Check it out. We'll put the link to our channel there, Danun Institute, so you can watch the rest of this message about breaking the veil. I'm Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live. Shalom.